Hey, qué rollo, quiero mandar un saludo a mi amigo Goodfella, de parte de tu amigo Jaime Munguía. Un abrazo, carnal. Ánimo. All right, I don't know if y'all can see me because there's sunlight. It's bang, gleaming in my eye right now. I don't know if that helped. No, we're still in it. We're still at a funny angle. But uh, next car I get 10. <laughs> but uh, I got her word this morning that Triple G and Jaime Munguia, they in the works. Now, I don't know exactly what will it be next. You heard rumors that Triple G could fight uh. Oh, buddy, what's old buddy name? Um, Michael Zephyr. That's what Zephyr was going around saying the Chief of Triple G was going to fight him next and all this, that, and the third. Um, so, I mean, you heard a couple rumors. I thought one of the five core brothers was going to be a rumor. Obviously, Lars and mandatory, so I don't know what's going to happen there. They're going to drop a belt, keep a belt. Um, so, a lot of people was up in arms when Jaime Munguia decided not to fight. Um, Jenna Big, which a lot of people's opinion I heard from his last performance versus Denzel Bentley, that just didn't make no sense. So, um, but honestly, um, it's a good fight for the zone. I mean, Triple G been milking him for a long time. You go from the Canelo performance, and kind of like Triple uh, Munguia as being an opportunist, neither because he tried to fight Triple G early in his career, and they beat, they stopped that fight. I think it was the California State Athletic Commission stopped it. It was when Canelo popped hot and he needed a replacement for Cinco de Mayo, but they approved Ronis Monterosi, which, you know, then again, we already went up. We didn't talk about that fight way too much the last few uh, couple weeks because a lot of these, these boxing thirsty whores out here, um, they got mad at me because I said, you know, we're going to complain about a fight. Let's not watch, you know, Triple G and Munguia. And then, you know, the midget went to the fight. And like I said about the midget, dude, these niggas is fake pro black, bro. And I don't... Just because you ain't pro-black or you are pro-black or you claim to be pro-black or you're not, I really don't care, <laughs> honestly. But what I really do hate is when somebody uh, uh, depend, uh, pretend to be one thing, you ain't what you are. That's one thing about, that's one thing I tell y'all about life, you know. Um, you know, people tell you and show you who they are all the time. You know, if you just shut the fuck up and listen and just watch, you know what I'm saying? You can make your own assumptions. And you, I'm telling you, if you shut up and just watch people and just listen to what they saying, you know, somebody, you know, hating on you, they jealous, they snitching on you at work. You can see it. You, man, I'm telling you, just, just peeping game, just watching people and not saying much, that comes, that comes with, that comes with maturity. You know, you sit back, you watch things for what it is, you can see shit before it happens. I ain't saying you, you know, down, down type of, you know, uh, you know, I don't know what you call them people. I don't, I don't want to use the, you know, the other word. But you know, you somebody that know the future. No, I can see you know. You sit back, really watch. You can see shit before it happens. That's why you slide or you know, you try to nip it in the bud. But uh, but yeah, you know, they did all the complaining about the fight. And then you go support the fight, and I'm like, dude, you know, I don't understand how people continue to follow some people on social media, um, because the message is is is. It's not that the message is, is, is staticky, you know, it's a disconnect, it's confusing. It's not even exceptions to the confu to the to the to the rules. It's always you know, like I said, the message is, you know, one day these niggas is pimps, the next day they laying up shacking up with hoes, you know what I'm saying? The next day they pro black, then they the kids, you know, named after presidents and they they, they married to the other. Which one is gonna be? Like I said, man, I done had homies that dated white girls, all type. I ain't, I don't treat them no different. But don't come in here trying to raise the black fist and power to the air to me. Just keep it real with me. That's all I ask. You know, if we, you know, cool, cool. But, um, yeah, with some disconnect there and people, you know, was complaining. But y'all watch, y'all support, y'all stream. You streaming, you still watch, you still talk about it. Just let me know, like ninety, like ninety-eight percent of the box community online. No matter what you categorize yourself as, hardcore, uh, casual, anything in between, purist, whatever it may be, um, the majority of people are just boxing whores. They gonna take what you give you, give you, you can pimp slap them, and they gonna come back for more. You can treat them how you want to treat them, and they gonna come back for more. And that's what it is. But um, yeah, that's the word in the street. The fight in the works. Um, you know, it was another rumor that he was in, you know, he was in talks with uh, 
Canelo Alvarez. You know, it was another rumor I heard out there that he possibly was in talks to be in, in the running for Canelo Alvarez after Canelo said he wasn't fighting no more Mexican fighters or nothing like that. So that was just a little, you know, rumor out there. But it's triple. G, it sounds like him and Triple G gonna get it on now. Will it be next? Or will it be some interim fights? I'm not sure, but that's a good fight for the zone. Jaime Munguia is a good ticket puller. Um, Triple G coming down in weight um, to fight Munguia. Um, Munguia damn near died at one of the weigh-ins making weight. So, I don't know how he made weight for his last fight. How it was. I didn't get a chance to see it. But, uh, but yeah, if he can make the weight, you know, he, you know, it should be a good fight. I'll tune into that one. Um... You know, I think Triple G, what Triple G hold? The WBA and the IBF. Yeah, Herb said he held the IBF too, so it'd be two belts. And then, you know, would Charlo try to fight him? Who knows? You know, Charlo really wasn't trying to fight him. They talking about the TV. It shouldn't matter what TV channel Charlo fighting on. You know, Jamal Charlo. Showtime don't even like Jamal Charlo from everything that, that I be hearing. They should have let him walk to the zone. But I feel they felt they made all these investments. So like I said, Steven Espinosa acting like he got juice. He ain't got no juice. But I guess when Monkey ain't bringing no belt to the table, I get, I understand it. But me, Monkey go get two belts, and Charlo ain't trying to fight uh, Plant Benavidez Andrade at 68, and then he still ain't trying to fight Monkey. I mean, that's all that need to be said. And Monkey, you know, get past Triple G, which is still an if. Triple G is still can punch. Um, and that's always a game changer. He still got a good jab, and he's still a solid fundamental. Fundamentally, that's what's gonna keep him in the game. But you know, if he can get past Triple G, fight Jamal Charlo, and then Jenna Big Left, I mean, he could be undisputed. He got that type of drawing power, and he really gonna be the next Mexican stud. And they probably really gonna try to feed his ass to Canelo Alvarez. I mean, uh, feed Canelo to him and try to transfer power. But you know, he's starting to become more refined. But without without stepping up in, in experience level and, and versus experienced fighters and versus competition, they keep putting versus the level competition in the end, um, he can't get no better. But the Triple G fight is perfect for him to get better because you fight somebody with experience, he's going to learn a lot in that fight, he should get better after that fight. Win, lose, and draw as long as he don't get damaged like, you know, damaged like canned foods on the, on the, on the, uh, on the truck, he should be all right. But uh, Triple G still, anytime you got somebody can punch, you got a jab like Triple G. But, you know, one thing I'm working on, I'm working on the jab and going to Triple G body. Triple G can be stopped to the body, or the stoppage can start to the body, but and that's the way to win up Canelo Alvarez. But Canelo looked off in that Triple G fight. I don't know what it was. I think he said he was injured. He looked hella off in that fight. He he, he ain't looked the same. He ain't looked the same, but, you know. It is what it is, but uh, yep, that's the word on the street. So I don't know how close or how true it was that he really was gonna fight Canelo Alvarez, but uh, at all. So I don't know how close that was. I'm out here looking like a grizzly bear. All oh, this here, so but I'm cool with it. Cause I'm trying to get as close, chopped off as close as the weekend. They got me, got me working Saturday, so I can't get a cup Saturday. So I gotta go Friday, but. I still look kind of semi-fresh for the holiday, but probably get a cut again before New Year's. Um, but, but, yeah, like I always tell y'all, let your hair grow and let your lines reset and all that type of stuff. That's a good thing about it. Let everything fill in, come back strong, then chop it. Unless it's in the summertime and you got to, you know what I'm saying, depending on who you are, how hot you get. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Chopping up the things we're talking about. I get lined every day. I get lined every week. I say you gonna be your hairline gonna be in the back of your asshole, boy. That is not a good thing to consistently get lined up every week. Hell no. You never make that mistake. Cause every time they line your hair up, it's pushing it naturally pushing it back. It's pushing it back. And they go, if you can't, if you can't, if you ain't got enough game to pull a chick in the middle of a haircut or shit your hair all wild, seeing these poor chicks with cheddar yellow teeth <laughs> but, <laughs> but no seriously man that's a uh that's an interesting fight but you know he you know he still may have to see Janet big if he want to get another belt or go undisputed so i mean fight triple g give you two belts i mean i don't know why triple g still fighting unless he just want to go out on a dub but you know he a mercenary everything he doing boxing is strategically to get money that's what it's about 
it was never about fighting the best. It wasn't about fighting the best in Canelo Alvarez. It was about money. If Canelo didn't bring the most money, he'd be going to the next guy. You know, they did a great job of orchestrating his career. They moved him like he was a novice. Like he started boxing at 18 years old. That's how they moved him. Like he started boxing at 18 years old. Exactly how they moved Triple G. You know, they, they didn't really believe to believe that he was gonna be a great professional. If he did, he'd have been on a fast track from day one. And he wasn't. All these hype Mike Keller man hyping him up. He's the next Mike Mike Tyson, man. When I first seen him versus Prosca, I said, try it. So I know he was alright. But to me, he ain't no Hall of Famer though. Straight up and down. I said what I said. I believe what I believe. Um But yeah, so that's just the word on the street, the good word. Let me know what you girls and guys think. Thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, next subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit all notifications, increase your chance, get notifications, we will live or drop a video. Financially want to support the channel, cash app, dollar sign, CJ Good313. Venmo CJ Good313, PayPal link description, hit the link tree, find me on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, Anchor, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, the whole nine. Um, let me know what you girls and guys think in the comment section. Um Appreciate y'all. Peace. And check out the middleweight uh, talk play, boxing talk playlist and the box runner playlist. Peace.